Hello, this is Haka Debean, and I am here with even more of SCP-6666, which I will be calling the e e Big Tree yeah, of Titania. I'm guessing Titania's corpse or something. I should probably avoid saying that in the first two minutes of the video. Anyway, if you liked the video, please leave a like on, on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And if you do not like the video, then I guess you can click off now. Let's get into this. Addendum 6666.9 Operation Catarize After Action and Report. I'm assuming this is all going to be on the same date, so unless there's a change in date, I am not going to mention the date, which is uh, May 24, 2019. And I don't think time is necessary unless there is a large jump. MK A7 drones, uh, Ulysses, Hero, and Astar are filled edited with 45 kilograms each of high density polypropylene spray foam. Ulysses, Hero, and, El and Astar are depart Delta Tower en route to SCP-6666. Drones arrive at SCP-6666. It's about 12.23 now. <sighs> Drones report in position at the opening in SCP-6666. SCP-6666-A showing no signs of unusual behavior. Drones begin spraying foam over the opening in, in SCP-6666. No unusual All activity detected. Hector turns to face Ulysses' drone. Drone is, is instructed to strafe Hector to confirm recognition. Hector follows uh, Oz Ulysses with its eyes. First application of a foam begins to set. Hector touches the now hardened foam. After a few moments, the entity attempts to pull the foam away from its body. K1 authorized to attempt tranquilization. Ulysses drone fires three tranquilizer darts into the chest of Hector. Hector destroys the drone with its sphere before the drone can react. Hero and Astro drones pull back to a safe distance. Hector resumes attempting to remove the foam around its waist. Taiwan launches three steel cable bolts for Charlie e e Dagger. The first bolt strikes Hector's spear arm and wraps it to the entity's body. The second and third bolts strike flesh on the side of the entity, pinning it to SCP-6666. Hector begins pulling against its restraints, the cable is known as beginning to buckle. The second cable bolt snaps, nearly missing in the Aster drone. Hit one team, team launches a three inch Kevlar guy line at, at Hector. The Kevlar guy line strikes Hector, pitting the Indy fully to Tanya. Hector continues to try and grab at the cable with its two smaller arms. Hit one launches two more steel cable bolts. The first strike like Hector's middle arm, pinning it to its side. The second and catches uh, Hector in a groove between its middle and lower arm, anchoring the entity sideways against it, against Titania. As certain hero drones re approach SCP-66, Hector struggles against its restraint, but is incapable of moving. Hector vocalizes loudly, but does not move. As certain hero. Oh, continue applying spray foam to with Titania. But periodically, both drones are returned to chart. Our two swap canisters out as they are consumed. Aster and Hero both confirmed that their final canisters have been depleted. The opening in SCP and Titania's side is considered fully covered. The nearby surveillance drones report a full cessation of smoke exuding from the opening. Aster and Hero depart for Delta Tower. Astro and Hero arrive at Delta Tower.
Now we have addendum 66-66-10, the SCP-343 interview. This is the last thing we're going to do today before we wrap up. Because I don't have as much time as I did yesterday, unfortunately. The following is a transcript of an interview conducted by Foundation staff Dr. Alto, Alto O'Cleff and SCP-343. Dr. O'Cleff was approved to form the interview due to his natural resistance against anomalous alterations. Oh, Dr. Clef? He's kind of famous. I'm going to give him the chaotic gremlin voice. Ah, oh, yes, young Alto, my child. Come in. Photo SV343 is a reality bender that goes by the name of God. Basically, believes himself as a God. Please, have a seat, or should I make a seat for you? SCP-343 manifests a chair next to Dr. Cliff, who remains standing. No thanks. Look, we both know I'm only here because we need to make sure you don't try to screw around with this interview. I hate doing this, so I'm going to need you to be straight with me because I don't want to be here all day. Come now, Otto. I've always enjoyed our chats. I haven't. Anyway, we've learned a couple of interesting new things about you recently. <laughs> but who can and truly say to know a mystery of God's its nature? I know your age, first of all, which is uh, ageless as a universe. Not that, and I know your name. Yerma the Usela, the Arcanist, Royal Vizier of the Ancient House of Molly Drog. I... Excuse me? It's a pretty easy question. Just yes or... I don't... What? How do you know about that? Cain gave you away. Said if you'd known when you were living here, he would have warned us ages ago. I also said you are a legendary econ man and grifter with delusions of grandeur. I mean, delusions feels a little much. God damn it, Kane. Kane the Wanderer. Planeswalker. Bad word. I can't say bad words. Is that a yes or no? Uh, I mean, yes, I suppose. But I've not gone by that name in... Christ, in a long, long time. I'm honestly, I'm kind of annoyed he even knew who I was. I worked very hard to try and keep my distance from him and his ilk. That's the old priest from the old eons of time who should have done us all a good favor and died when the first man did. Where are you from, then? So obviously, we've learned that SP343 is not any sort of god. He is a sorcerer. Look, I... Alright, fine. I'll cry right, but know this. Even my great mind is not infallible, oh dear Alto. Can't remember all things, but I... Uh, I can't. Not quite in the same way. I sort some memories away, though, and these may be... may be useful to you in some way. Where are you from? Goodness, calm down. Okay, where I am from, it's funny, you know, how things repeat themselves. The world was a more magical place back then, but for all that arcane energy, everything looked the same as it does now. Not now as in this minute, but now as in these last few millennia. I was born a long time ago, in a place that has long existed as the seas rose. My name was Matthew, or rather, do you know what the first languages were? Egyptian. Ah, uh, you'd think so, but you'd be wrong. There are Cassidite languages. I guess I didn't give one up to a uh, gremlin voice. Sorry. You kind of seem serious today. Literally named after Cain, that scoundrel, since he was probably the first person to ever write something down. We didn't have a, a, a little of distinctions of Ord back then, 
but it was similar to Phoenician, or at least the alphabet was similar. We just called it the Canaan Tongue. You know, my name was Matthew, and my mother's name was Mira. My father was... Actually, I don't know if I remember his name. Killier. He was a royal op official for the Kingdom of Valley. Well, um, I grew up in the court of that house. <laughs> Funny how fast that came back. Do you know how long it has been since I spoke in Cain's tongue? How strange. What was the house of Apollyon? Ah, they were the Sky Kings. Saw themselves the mightiest and most ancient kingdom of men. People would tell stories about how King Apollyon had stolen great, um, great treasure from the court of the gods and gave, and gave him dominion over the kingdoms. I don't know how much truth there was to it, but that's what people said. What happened to them? House Apollyon? Oh, well, that's hard to say, yeah, I think. They were the greatest power in the world, or at the moment they weren't. There was a campaign, I think. Apollyon would call young men to serve in his armies, and all the great houses would have to answer. You know? And I distinctly remember there being some kind of campaign. Then the king died or was killed, and his son died too, I think? Let me think for a moment. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. I remember us in Parable, I think. This is the story of the four great knights. Three betrayed him, one loved him, and went to his doom trying to please him. What were their names? I can't say. I would know how they would translate, but it was... Uh, Lehair, Lancelt... Ajir and Hector, if I'm not mistaken. The first three were the betrayers, the last one and it was the knight he loved. Something like that. I think there was a curse as well. Regardless, as for what happened to them, I don't know. One day their messages caught coming, and the next day there was smoke over the mountains of Apollyon. You get bits and pieces over time from travelers talking about a monster with many faces and a creature that killed any who looked at it. What is it? Just talking about it now, there are things that come back. I couldn't have been God. Maybe a boy. A young man. It was this, how do you describe it? This rolling horror. A demon with six eyes the size of a mountain. Crashing and screaming and dragging its way to the north, away from the sea. Horrible to look at. I remember a man telling me that the monster was a creature of the old world. Something... Uh, Strange in origin. I'm not saying that at words. Stop saying it. Damn. I don't like slurs like that. Anyway. I didn't know what that meant then, but the timing was right. I think it would have had to come from a Aliana. It had those horrible steel chains all over its arms, I think. And yes, yeah, certainly is some doom came to Apollyon. But the nature of it escapes me now. Alright, what do you think of, about the troll of the night then? Jesus, are you all right? I... Hey, Control, can we get medical or... No, 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 I'm sorry, I'm fine. I... They called them that. The fairies called them that, I mean. Made more palatable. Maybe whatever blasphemy they had to commit to conjure them up. I'm sorry, Otto. It's been a long time. There is a lot I've forgotten over the years. I don't think I really considered... But that when I put that blood, I didn't mean to prolong along my life, you know. <laughs> but you do forget things, for better or worse. But I can't. I can't forget that. I can't forget them. What were they? They... I was a young wizard in that, at the time. No more than 60 or 70 years old. In the early years of my life, I had left Ulam years prior after my... My mother took ill and passed, and then traveled to the desert to study under, under sorcerer Irrelevine of the Deva in Malidrog. We were so far from the sea, I don't think anyone ever expected. What happened? I do not uh, truly know why they exist. There were stories, 
There are always stories. People will talk about how a fairy king prayed for a knight to save him from a dragon. And the knight was a man without a soul or something. We knew about the fairies, even if most people had never seen one before. They lived across the sea, and there was the, this, this white city on the coast. I can't remember the name, but you could go there or go on. And on sorry nights, the fairies would come and you could trade with them. But the antelope were... Is they lived with the fairies in the woods beyond the sea. That's what the story said. They were a fairy tale monster, Otto, like a boogeyman or a ghoul. Something that mothers would warn their children about at night. Something you'd think of any time you heard someone shuffling in, around in the dark. A horror lost over time. I remember the first one we laid eyes on. I remember the first time we laid eyes on them. It was on a summer night, and there was a dune that rose high above our citadel to the west. You could see them from um, all that distance. They were these massive things, taller by far than any man, covered in black and gray matted hair all over their bodies. They were like if someone described a man to you, but they had never ever really seen a man themselves. Their eyes glowed in the dark, and they just stood there, shoulder to shoulder, maybe 50 of them in a row. We tried to approach them and communicate, but they just stared at us. They made this, this horrible noise, like a child giggling, this half chattering inhuman laughter, and they would sing these eerie songs in high pitched voices. My master was a high magistrate, a extremely powerful old person in his own right, and he went out to disperse them, and they. What did they do? They pulled him apart, like he was a toy. They just grabbed him slowly, and they. They weren't affected by his magic at all. They just started pulling on him and laughing and they pulled him apart. Now this is where I decided to flee. But you couldn't run from them either. They were faster than any man and stronger than any man. They couldn't be pierced with spear. They weren't, weren't bothered by Arcana. They seemed to dislike fire but they weren't harmed by it. They rounded us all up and balanced in these black chains and they dragged us back to their ships on the coast. I... I only survived by laying over the body of an old farmer who begged and cried for three days straight. By the time we arrived, he had gone still. When I flipped him over, everything left inside him fell out. The earth had been reduced, I had reduced him by half, like pine needle against sandpaper. They took us out onto their long ships, and there were so many of us, we couldn't even and lay down. After the first week, things were better. Enough people had died and fallen, and that there was room enough to sit down on top of them. The interloper were sent, seems to know what to feed us. We got raw meat and seawater, which I was able to at least make audible. After a month, we arrived on the shores of the old forest of the fairies. But it was different than what you'd hear in the stories. I dragged us by our chains, living and dead, into the darkness, and we... I... All I remember was how dark it was, and how you could always feel the rotting hair brushing up against you. Like they were right on top of you, watching. You feel one of them brush by silently in the dark, and wonder if it was your turn. They hung our chains up in trees, and they would come by and pull a person on their, off their manacle like picking a ripe apple. And they would just play with you. they play a command so hard their fingers would go straight through you, or squeeze someone so hard their eyes would come out of their face. There was a, God, a woman, I remember now, who was pregnant, swept on the ship by eating their, her own dead mother, and she, they pulled her down and started doing the work, and then they just pulled her in half, F, Alto. It was like opening a bag of chips for them. It was, it was nothing. They barely react. They just make their horrible little laugh and play in the blood. They pulled her and just crushed it. They... They never slept, ever. You could try to sleep, but they'd be watching you, eyes glued to you, and when you slept, it was worse. They were limited by reality and what they could do to you while you were awake. But they were in our dreams. After a while, we decided that's how they communicated. They talked to each other in nightmares, and that's why they kept us here, so we would have their nightmares and they could talk. They recorded their whole history in those nightmares, where you could see, we'd always see this. This one where there was this woman, a fairy, and all these other smaller fairies around her. 
Then you turn around and see a line of interlopers that stretched out as far as you could see, just watching her. They always felt so miserable and sad. I never felt like they hated you, just that they didn't think like we did. How did you escape? Escape? <laughs> Nobody escaped. You escaped when you died, and if you died, they take your body to their, their god, and they throw you in a pit. We said, we, we said that when you went into the pit, you become part of the nightmare. Sometimes when we slip, after we would see the faces of our friends, the faces were always twisted into these, these grim mockeries of what they had had been. But the eyes, the eyes, Alto, you could see them in there. Behind the Mask of Delusion, they were afraid. We weren't alone, though. There were others there, fairies of that forest who were bound in the same black iron as we were. They were broken in some way. I can't quite remember how, but there was something about them you couldn't say or that would catch in the mouth. They were all shell-shocked. You know, they didn't, they weren't built for this sort of thing. I mean, neither were we, but there were those among us who were making plans, hatching schemes. Those who wanted to leave the nightmare, oh, you know. But the fairies, they were just broken. But we did escape, I suppose. There was a sorcerer, Noah, from the old house of Lament. He really put it all together. The interlopers, they needed us. They had to create horror for us because their whole culture relied on it. They couldn't even so much as speak to each other without our nightmares. Old Noah always said that he had a plan that he was going to get us out of there. And well, then he disappeared. We thought he had been taken by the interlopers, dragged off to meet a cruel land. But then one day, the sun peeked through the treetops, and all the flowers bloomed at the same time everywhere. The next day, it rained. And the day after that as well. It kept raining for a week, then a month. But by the time we finally found old Noah, his body was just a smoking husk covered in an arcane symbols and fully spent. But it kept raining, and the valley started to fill up. I remember the first time we, the first time we saw one of them die. The jerk slipped into a pit that, that had started to flood, and while those in the pit just swept away as the waters rose. The interloper just stood there, flat foot at the bottom of the pit. He didn't float, he just watched the waters rise. The other interlopers got around and they just stared down at him, singing their songs and chattering, but realized then that they they couldn't hear him because none of us were sleeping. And he just, well, he thrashed around for a bit at the end, but he never came out of the pit and the waters kept rising. How'd you get away? Near the end, when the sea started to come over the shoreline, it started rounding a bunch of us up, millions maybe, from all over the forest, and dragged them deeper into the woods. That's where their god was, but they got sloppy, where they didn't notice, and we managed to sneak away. We didn't go alone. The fairies, the ones who still had their wits about them, came with us. We ran all for the mountains and the tops to the south, and we had to. The path we took, we just see the forest for miles. Once we got over the tree line, you could just see it forever. It felt like... And that's when we saw it. What was it? The dread god Alto. Monstrous, festering, glowed like a corpse in the sun. It was so dark then, the sky was just black clouds and rain. But you could still see it. Red lights around its base and people hanging on its limbs. The fairies, the ones, ones who were with us, there are a few who, when they saw it, started weeping and fled back into the forest. You could hear it, too, moaning and grinding and screaming, but the rest of us kept, kept running. One day, hey, the world was underwater. We lived on the mountain for a hundred years. If I had to wager, and by the time the waters receded, the world had changed. The interlopers were gone, the fairies had retreated back to the old forest. And the rest of us just went on with our lives. Alto, I need to be gravely serious with you for a moment. I realize now that by asking this is of, of me, you no doubt have reason to see these 
Hicks answered. It has long been my my hope and my belief that the inch love was drowned in the uh, and at the bottom of the great flood, along with all those miserable poor people strung up up in their corpses. <sighs> but if you if you find evidence that this is not true, that per perhaps they that they survived also. I cannot do it again. Not after all this time. If it comes to, comes to it, I will go away from here. I need you to tell me truthfully. Please, Alto. I need to know. I can't do it again. I can't go back into the dark. Don't worry. We don't have any reason to believe that. I wish I could trust you here, Alto. But I see the light in your eyes. I don't need to bend reality to see it. Please listen to me. You must not seek out these creatures. If you see them, you must flee. And know that even in your flight might not be enough. Their civilian relies on our terror, Alto. Do you understand this? If they have been buried, they must remain buried. Please understand me. They must remain buried. And so it seems that the children of the night were really, really bad to humanity. They were uh, intense torturers of, of humanity. And of course, they tried to commit genocide on humanity. Whew. So just remember, fear is shuffling in the dark. Maybe your fear isn't so unjustified. Anyway, if you liked the video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. If you did not like the video, then you just wasted 27 minutes getting scared by the children of the night. Again. I will be seeing you tomorrow with even more of this, this article, I think it will be part 11, well, no, addendum 11, part 5, and then we still have 12 and 13, then we'll, we will be done as I, as I skim through. I'll be seeing you next time with another part, until then, Goodbye and have a good rest of your day.